This is day V3OI and I'm going to deviate a little bit from the content I normally post on my channel which is around uh, electronics and home brewing, uh, more so in the amateur radio community. And I just want to talk about what's happening in the US and Canada to the uh, model aircraft uh, community. Recently the US has implemented something called Remote ID and in Canada has uh, implemented some very drastic, uh, I'd, I'd call it draconian, regulations that uh, really cripples the model uh, aircraft uh, community in Canada. And I think it's both of these things are going to just basically kill the model uh, aircraft uh, hobby. This all stems from a request from XJet, who posted a video a while ago, a few weeks ago, uh, requesting that uh, the community come forward and post their comments on remote ID. Now there has been a lot of uh, YouTube content around remote ID that's posted by others. And uh, what um, XJet's saying now, if we get, uh, uh, we post even more content around this, everyone comes out and posts uh, comments, maybe what we can do is we can get the YouTube algorithm to start taking this content and making it available to a broader, a broader audience and thereby making more people aware of what's happening in the model aircraft community and uh, maybe we can get some momentum and we can uh, make some uh, changes. In this video I'm going to stand on the shoulders of giants. I'm not going to go into what remote ID is in, in the US. I'm not going to talk about what it's potential impact is, but it's uh, it's not implemented in Canada yet, but if remote ID um, gets implemented in Canada, it's basically going to be the nail in the coffin for the model aircraft um, a hobby. And I've put some videos here that uh, you can go and certainly look at to uh, learn about uh, uh, remote ID. I strongly recommend you look at Curry Kitten's uh, video Flight Test has got some off, some awesome content around uh, remote ID, as is XJet. I, on a previous slide, I showed uh, X, XJet channel, and this post here, I made it very large. It's it's very interesting. In the um, a comparison is made between firearm registration and ownership in the United States compared to the draconian regulations in response to flying model aircraft and the requirement to go and equip uh, these model aircraft with these remote ID modules that track where they are and where the pilot's flying from. So it's a, it's a very interesting, um, it's, it's a very interesting uh, perspective and I encourage you to take a look at this. We have an opportunity in Canada is in that the Canadian regulations are about to undergo an amendment and uh, um, Don Joyce has posted this uh, really good video where he talks about the amendments to the regulation and we have a 90 day uh, consultation period that's up in September 2023 where we could post our comments. And uh, my thinking is, if we piggyback onto the momentum of remote ID and we make people aware of what's going on, and in addition, we post our uh, comments to Transport Canada uh, around their regulations, maybe we might be able to uh, make some change. Now, posting comments to uh, Transport Canada may be you know, a waste of time because their mind may be made up and they're going to just plow forward with the uh, regulations and they're not going to listen to what anyone says, but at least we have to try. And I've posted here the link to where the um, uh, details of the regulations and are and where you can post your comments as well as you can post your comments to this email address, but I would strongly encourage you to look at uh, Don Joyce's video and he goes through how to post comments and uh, he goes through each of the changes and he talks about them and uh, I again I strongly encourage you to take a look at that. 
So what I've put together here is what my feedback would be to Transport Canada. It's going to be something like this. And I think this is what we need to work towards. Um, first thing is that I think we need to talk about recre recreational RPAS. And for those who don't understand, uh, RPAS is what um, Transport Canada calls any remotely piloted uh, aircraft. Um, the, uh, drones, the model aircraft, anything, they call it an RPAS. So I think, you know, the uh, regulations needs to be amended and there needs to be a definition for small recreational remotely piloted aircraft. And to me, I would define that as something that's less than 1.5 kilograms and does not have any flight stabilization or controlling system to have the aircraft fly autonomously so when you take your hands off, the air, air, aircraft is not going to hover by itself or it's going to fly by itself. And the rationale behind this is that by d defining this and making these recreational RPAS uh, adhere to the same regulations as sub 250 uh, gram uh, model aircraft, we're going to get back to where we were with the park flyers and having the kids go in parks and flying potentially, you know, their little foamies that may be uh, over 250 grams. Uh, the other thing I think that should happen is that the various certificates that uh, transport, uh, licensing certificates that Transport Canada has put forward should be changed. There is the basic pilot certificate, and I think that should be more focused on recreational use, not commercial or professional use. And it, it uh, should, you know, contain aircraft with flight controllers and it should be focused more on, rec on rec recreational use. If the government is, is unwilling to change the basic pilot certificate, well, maybe introduce a, you know, a recreational pilot certificate. Just like in the traditional conventional um, aviation perspective in Canada, we have a recreational pilot license. So why not have a recreational, you know, um, RPAS uh, license? And that recreational license take away all the jargon that's, or all, all the requirements that a conventional pilot needs, would need to know. But someone flying a recreational drone or airplane doesn't need to know. Do we really need to know what density altitude is? Or, you know, do we really need need to know what a cumulonimbus cloud is? We're in a park flying our little uh, aircraft and those things are not going to be applicable to us. Uh, have the license address, you know, what's, uh, what's applicable to operation in a park, a safe operation in a park. I would go further and say update the advanced pilot certificate and have it more focused on the commercial or professional use and focus on as well if you're going to be flying your your aircraft in around near airports or in controlled airspace you know rely on the advanced pilot certificate to control or to you know um, promote safety uh, uh, for operations uh, of that uh, nature here's an interesting analogy this is from the Canadian air regulations the same regulations that talks about our, our paths. And uh, this is as of May 2023, so it's recent. And if you take a look at the definition of a model rocket, it's got, a, it's got an engine size, a maximum engine size, 160 Newton seconds, which is huge, by the way. That's a huge motor, and that motor could potentially propel a rocket up to thousands of feet into the air, one, certainly one or 2,000 feet in, into the air easily. And a model rocket, it must have a, a weight, um, including uh, the engine, that's less than 1.5 kilograms. 1.5 kilograms. So if, if we could fly a model rocket up to potentially 2,000 feet and it's weighing 1.5 kilograms, why can't we fly a little, you know, airplane in a park that's below 400 feet and, you know, for at uh, one and a half uh, kilograms. And maybe Transport Canada could further reduce, you know, look at limiting the amount of power 
that a model aircraft could have and maybe they could put like the number of watts of uh, uh, output the motor uh, has, has to have. The other interesting thing when it comes to control of rockets is uh, these are the three regulations, that's it, that controls uh, model rockets in Canada. And the first uh, regulation says no person shall fly a rocket other than a model rocket without permission from uh, the minister. Now, I used to fly high power rockets in Canada and in the US, and uh, we had authorization from the minister to fly our high power rockets. And uh, very often these rockets would go in excess of Mach 1, and they'd be flying, you know, you know 10, 20 ish thousand feet. And uh, uh, we did this uh, without incident for uh, um, many, many years. The key regulation here is this last one here. It says, no person shall fly a model rocket uh, that is likely to be hazardous to aviation safety. That's it. There's no requirement for a license. There's no requirement that you, that you study and you know what a cumulonimbus cloud is, or you know what icing does to a rocket, or there's, there's no requirement, simple. And so I think this is the kind of thing we need to get back to for recreational use of model aircraft. I'd like to make a couple of suggestions to the drone community here. Um, and I think sometimes we are our own worst enemy. And I think, you know, you look at some of the postings uh, on YouTube around drones. I think, you know, if the lawmakers look at some of these postings, they would think that, you know, drone pilots are flying in the wild, wild west and they're a bunch of yahoos and they don't give a, a crap about safety. And I've just pulled a couple of videos here and uh, just to, to illustrate what I'm saying about. So here's a video that's posted three months ago. Here's another one posted six days ago. And they're talking about long range FPV flights. This one talks about over 100 kilometers away. Now, I don't know if these flights are taking place in Canada, and I know a lot of these long-range flights, um, the pilots do fly over mountains or fly over forests, and they're not really flying over populated areas, so they are taking some level of uh, precautions. But uh, certainly in Canada, there's no way you could fly a um, aircraft uh, for 100 uh, kilometers. Uh, you would be in violation of the law here. And then you've got other videos like this. Now, keep in mind, these two videos here, they're six or seven years old, and it certainly predates remote ID, and it may even predate all the uh, regulations that uh, uh, the FAA has imposed on the amateur radio community. So while this may have been legal at the time, now I don't think this is legal. But I just want, want to draw your attention to some of the things here and why I say that we we are sometimes our uh, worst uh, enemy. So this is about building diving, where these pilots, these uh, drone pilots are flying their drones close to buildings and they're swooping down, and it is cool. I gotta admit, uh, you know, these pilots are very skilled and uh, this, this is awesome to watch. I watch this stuff, it's really cool do, doing these tricks. Now in this video here, this is an abandoned built building and you'll see a lot of the building dives are being done around abandoned uh, buildings so there is some safety in mind but if you look at this uh, video here you'll see that there's a car here uh, that's uh, traveling on the road and so you know it's still you've got some public access or you still have some public um, uh, bystanders or uh, pedestrians around and I would question whether you know that's a good idea to be doing this and posting this on YouTube. Here's another video that was taken in downtown Atlanta. Now I don't know if this is a photoshopped uh, video but it certainly looks real and if it's real I kind of look at this and I shake my head. Here's a building dive in uh, against an inhabited building in Atlanta and down at the bottom uh, here, certainly there's pedestrians and bystanders, and uh, this is just a recipe for disaster waiting to happen. But with videos like this that we're posting, we may not be 
putting our hobby or putting what we do in a good light. And I, and I think what we need to do going forward is we need to post a little bit more responsible content. Keep public safety in mind. Demonstrate that we are responsible flyers. If you're going to be doing these these types of things, which are cool, I watch these. I'm not I'm not saying it's not cool, and I'm not saying it's not uh, uh, um, interesting. But maybe post about you know what you're doing around safety. How are you getting around the law? Does the law apply to uh, to you in a certain way? You know, talk about those things to make the public and make the lawmakers uh, see that we're not a bunch of yahoos. And it's not just limited to the drone community. Um, there was an incident here recently where a police agency, um, a police force, was flying a drone near a controlled airport. And they were flying that drone um, in an honor. Uh, they did not have authorization to fly that drone. And uh, as a result, they flew that drone and it collided with an aircraft here and that aircraft sustained substantial damage. It was able to land, no one got, got injured. But Don Joyce re, um, reported on this and he talked about the fines and uh, that the light fines that were issued to the police force. And he you know, compared some of the other incidences in Canada and some of the fines that were issued to, to other RPAS pilots in Canada and he looked at the um, discrepancy in the fine that was issued to the police force. If you want to learn more about the the incident here, here's there's a QR code here you can use and I've got the link to the news story here here at the bottom. But also uh, most recently MAC, the Model Aeronautics Association of Canada, which is the same as I think the AMA in the US um, they lost their exemption. Uh, they had an exemption where at a MAC field, uh, a MAC member could go and fly freely without the need to having their aircraft registered, without having a license. They had an exemption and they can go fly. But what happened with there were a few MAC fields that they violated some of the Transport Canada regulations and as a result MAC lost that exemption and MAC members are no longer uh, able to fly. They must now go out and get their license and register their aircraft. So it's not just, uh, you know, the drone community that's uh, causing problems uh, in the um, uh, model aircraft uh, community. So here's another suggestion I've got to the drone community. You know, you know mentor beginners, mentor people getting into the sport or, or getting into the hobby and keep public safety in mind when you're men mentoring. And I put a couple of notable, I know that there's a lot of uh, YouTubers uh, out there that do mentor people and uh, I'm just encouraging more people to mentor or when they mentor people, keep safety in mind. I know Joshua Bardwell, he was instrumental uh, to me when I built my FPV um, drone you can see in the background there. Uh, I followed his uh, his advice and uh, his guidance in terms of how to fly it, and uh, I, I I do so in a very safe uh, safe manner. Uh, Don Joyce flight tests another a couple people that have really good uh, content, and as I said, there's lots of other people. There's Painless 360, and there's a whole bunch of others out there that uh, have some really good channels, and they. Uh, really there to mentor beginners that are getting into the hobby. This is my last slide and what I'm encouraging everyone to do is to speak up. Uh, if we all were to speak up and post our comments onto uh, the Transport Canada website or email Transport Canada with our comments, maybe with enough people we might be able to make some changes. Uh, after all, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And I've posted some channels here of notable YouTubers that have been speaking out. Uh, a lot of these are speaking out more so about remote ID. But uh, I encourage you to take a look at what they have to say. And if you can, post your own video. And once again, 
you know, uh, talk to Transport Canada and let them know what's going on. So at this point, I'm going to stop droning on and I'm going to thank you for watching this, this video. And I hope that uh, you're now motivated to go forward and uh, speak up and help us in this cause. Thank you.